You know I love my technology. Well, I've eventually got hold of the NV100 Commander from OneLeaf. Yeah, this is a night sight that attaches to the back of your normal optical scopes, turns them into daytime digital and night IR scopes. Keep watching, I know a lot of you guys have been after one of these and after review, so I'll tell you all about it, but a little bit quickie on it, I'm actually very impressed with it. Welcome guys to a new video from Ergonology. I'm Steve and on this channel we do a whole load of air rifles, air pistols and technology reviews. So if you're new here, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification and always check down in the YouTube video description. In there you'll find links to everything I'm talking about as well as our cool merchandising which you really should get hold of. Um, you'll find a link to our Facebook group, very, very popular group on there, lots of good advice. But when you do apply to join, make sure you answer the questions. Don't answer the questions, you won't get accepted. There's links to our forums on there as well, as well as our link to our cool 3D web page where you can get 3D printed stuff that we do, as well as a full range of the immersive optic scopes. But anyway, let's crack on. Today we have the One Leaf. NV100 Commander. Here's the box it comes in and here is the unit. Now I'm going to keep calling this from now on because that's a mouthful. I'm just going to keep calling it the NV100. So what is the NV100? Well basically this is an attachment that is a digital camera inside here with an infrared um, um, IR uh, beam coming out so that you can actually see daytime digitally and nighttime digitally. And the idea of this is that you attach it onto the end of your normal scope and then it just turns it into a digital slash night scope. Nice and simple. And the way it all works is basically with this little adapter. This little adapter here, is you can get different sizes of them. So when you decide that you're gonna order one of these, you have to pick which size of adapter. You can get the adapters individually, but basically the adapter goes on your scope, that clips on the end, turns and has a nice little click and that's it. You switch the unit on and inside there is an LCD screen. There's menu systems and everything. You can record, take pictures. It's nighttime with infrared coming out. It's even got a laser dot on it. It's all powered by an 18650 rechargeable battery. Pretty smart little unit. What makes this thing actually quite good is its price. Um, Normally you're paying a good hefty 400 pounds for stuff like this. This one, and this is prices as of September 2021. Um, if you go to the One Leaf website, it's $299 free shipping. That in September 21 equated to 214 UK pounds. That is dirt cheap, and that's with one adapter. If you want additional adapters, different sizes, and they come in sizes, I'm just checking, 42, 45 millimeters, and 48 millimeters, then those adapters are about an extra 15 quid. So if you want to get hold of one, check out in the YouTube video description. I'll leave a link down there where you can go and get one. But um, for that price, you can't really go wrong. 214 quid, 15 pounds, that's pretty damn good. So anyway, what do you get in the box? Okay, so what do you get in the box for your 215 pounds? Well, quite a nice box actually. Um, nicely done, nicely padded out. You get your obligatory cleaning cloth in there. 
you get the instructions themselves. They're not great, but they're not too bad. They're the usual broken Chinese instructions. That they do a good job of telling you how to work it all. Um, you get some little warning labels about the battery. You get, and this is interesting, is you get a spare eyepiece cover. So the idea here is that you can have a long eye relief if you've got recoil rifle or short eye relief if you use an air rifle and get up close to the screen. Very, very nice little handy thought to put in there. You also get a USB cable. Now this USB cable is not for charging the 18650 battery in here. The 18650 battery sits in this little part here. If I just unscrew it, and I'll leave a picture. Um, that plugs in there like so. Um, there is on the side a USB port, which this USB cable goes. It is not for charging. Um, you should be charging that battery separately outside using standard torch battery chargers that you would use. That is purely for transferring data to and from. Um, you get an SD card as well, and this will take up to a 256 gig SD card. I'm not sure if they supply an SD card with it or not. Um, you get a nice carry case. You get the adapter that you decided to pick. Um, and that's about it. Oh, and more most importantly is they give you a roll of electrical tape. And you're gonna wonder what's that electrical tape for? Well, that brings us on to how to set this up. So let's talk about how you set this up. So setting up the MV100, I've borrowed off their website, I hope they don't mind, is the installation video which I'm gonna run through and I'm talking through. So this is basically what you'll get in the box. You've got the Commander MV, the adapter for the actual scope, some tape, Allen keys, and your scope. So the first thing you're gonna to need to do is install the adapter. So what you'll do is you'll connect up the adapter, turn it and click it in place into the main body of the MV100. Then you're going to need to get some of the insulation, um, electrical tape they give you, and wrap it around your scope. That serves two purposes. One is to protect your scope from scratches, and two is to make a nice tight fit. It's extremely important that you get that adapter to fit on very snugly and square. And you want to make sure that the crosshairs are central and not tilted left or right. And then you tighten down on the Allen keys. And basically then once you've got that all set up and centered, you adjust the dioptic so that you can see and read the menu systems in the actual scope itself in the um, menu systems. Then you change that little wheel at the bottom and you get the crosshairs in the scope absolutely pin sharp. So that focuses the actual NV100 to the actual crosshairs and then you focus on your scope, be it a side parallax or front parallax on the actual scope. And once you've done all that lot, you should be totally set up and it works very, very, very well. Um, but let's just get back onto that tape. When you actually decide that you're going to fit this, and let's just take my Mamba here, I've got a Mamba, um, we'll take the old, one off on this, the adapter I've got on this one, and take that off. When you put that on, and I've used red tape here just to emphasize it a bit more, but that has got to be really snug. If you think it's just about right, add another layer on there, because of this unit hanging off the back, tends to want to droop and when it droops the crosshairs go up and down and you want to get those crosshairs bang in the center. So use some tape on there, get it as snug as you can, put on the adapter and then tighten down with the Allen keys and make sure that that is rock stable. You get that step right, everything then just works. And then literally it's just a matter of taking it, clicking it and plug it on the end. There's a little catch there that you can take it off off it pops like so, and you can use the scope as normal like that. Or if you want, you can take the adapter off, but then when you put it back on, you've got to go through that procedure to make sure it's all perfectly set up. But then it's just a matter of click on, click off, and you can see how much that hangs off the back, so you do need to get that really snug. And it took me quite a few attempts to work out the trick. Once you've done it, it works very well. And of course, if you've got multiple adapters, you can put them onto anything. For example, here is the Immersive Optics 5 to 30. This is a long eye relief prismatic, therefore it works really, really well. And this is using the 42 diameter one. And again, it's just a matter of putting it on, click, I'm away I go. I've now turned this beautiful pin sharp prismatic scope from Immersive Optics into a night sight. And you can see now it's hanging quite a bit and you've got to make sure that that's good and tight. But that's basically how to set the whole unit up. Just to run through that again, really simple. Dioptic, get the menu system pin sharp. Focus wheel here to get the crosshairs 
pin sharp, then the focus on your actual scope and the zoom on your scope and away you go. Okay, so let's run through some of the features of the MV100. And um, this is an exhaustive list and I've got a big list in front of me. So the sensor itself, like we said, it's a Sony sensor and it uses their StarViz CMOS, which basically takes a lot of the ambient light from stars, from the moon, from any street lights and uses that to enhance the picture. So it's actually got quite good capabilities without the IR touch. So if you're shooting at dusk, it's actually pretty damn good at that. Um, it can take video and pictures, 1080p at, fr uh, at 30 frames per second. Um, you can knock it down if you want to 720p. Um, and the picture's the same, 1080p, 720p. So pretty good. Three times digital zoom in here as well. So there's a little button on the side here where you can press the button and it will zoom in three times. Now, obviously that is cropping the actual image. So you're gonna lose some resolution on there, but it's digital zoom. We all know how digital zoom works. 18650 battery in there. We've got hundreds of these around for our torches and for our other IR kit as well. Like I said, just make sure that you do not attempt to charge it through the charge port. The USB, it's not designed. You'll need to charge that independently. They say the battery will last up to eight hours, um, but yeah, take that with a pinch of salt. Depends on how much you use the IR torch, how much power you use with the IR torch. Batteries themselves, the titchy little batteries, no, I'm eight six fifty. Keep a spare one in your pocket, swap it over, you're good to go. Uh, SD card, it will take in there. It will take up to a 256 gig SD card in there. Um, and like I said, the USB cable is in there for accessing if you don't want to take the card out. I personally just take the card out, use a card reader and read it directly onto my PC. Um, we have the buttons up the front here. So there's a power button, a menu button. Uh, this also has a built-in, let's see if we can get this to work for you. So we're just switching this on. This has a built-in red dot as well, um, which is really handy. So it's a very low wattage red dot. There we go. And we'll just about hopefully see the red dot on my hand. I'm not sure if that's going to come out on camera, but it's certainly there. Um, and you can adjust that and zero that red dot up as well. Um, like we said, it's got IR. Now the IR itself, <clears throat> you can pull this little bar out and that helps focus the IR. So narrow beam, wide beam, and it's got six brightness levels. The IR is 850 uh, nanometer, which is personally, I think the better. Um, it certainly throws it a lot further. Um, it gives you a much brighter image as well. So um, good to see that. And they claim this goes out to 300 meters, which I was very dubious about. But you'll see later, I was wrong. It's actually very, very good. So yeah, not too bad on that at all. What else we got through there? Uh, the video format it shoots in, it's a bit of a strange one. Um, instead of H.264, which is the normal video format, it writes it out as a .ts file, which is H.265. Now, if you're using modern processing software, it will generally pick that up. Um, yeah, it's most of the video players you do. If not, there are conversion tools, free ones out there that you can use. So just watch out for that. The video. It comes out as a strange format. Um, the whole thing, how does it weigh? Without the battery in it, it's 12 ounces. So it's not that heavy at all. There's the palm of my hand. It fits quite happily in the palm of my hand really well. Um, a nice little feature as well. Um, and this is what I used when um, later on you'll see the video footage. It's got a tripod adapter. So I basically connected up this, this up to one of my scopes, uh, like so. Um, let's just make sure we get that on the right way. Connect it up, use the tripod adapter, dropped it onto a tripod and filmed that way. So you can use this for nighttime spotting as well. Really, really handy. Nice little afterthought putting that on there. You know, it's not, it's not much of a thing, but it's a great little feature to have in there. What else have we got in here? All right, the display system inside here is color as well. So it's a full color display system. The menu systems, it's very hard to get images through this and put it on camera, but I'll leave an image of the menu system up there. Fully inclusive. You can format, you can set the date time, you can actually center the crosshairs so you can take the LCD screen and move it around and what it's actually doing is moving the image and using a crop to move it so if you've got your crosshairs roughly central and you want them just a little bit you can actually shift the image around a bit it's got slow-mo why you'd want that probably for those kill shots maybe but you can slow-mo video record in there there's lots in there date time formatting setting it all up your menu options when you want the IR to come on when you switch it on when you switch it up 
all sorts of stuff. Fully comprehensive menu system in there. I'm not going to go through and go through the whole shooting match in there. But really, really, really nice system. So I think the big takeaways are is that the sensor in here is actually quite good. It's very good at gathering light with the built-in IR, six level IR torch on there. Um, it does video and it does photos for you as well. Um, absolutely brilliant. Um, I don't think it does any streaming, but nobody ever uses that to be brutally honest with you and there's no hdmi output which is a shame because if i could have shown you direct footage for it but it's not on there but for the price i'm pretty damn impressed so certainly feature packed so what's it like then after all that raving about it well i was quite dubious about this you know it's fairly cheap it looks like another one and i was thinking is it any good so i took it outside and we did some daytime footage with it so this was it was using the camera adapter um, and basically um, the first set of video we did was with the 5 to 30 prismatic from it immersive optics and then we stuck the NTC Mamba Pro on it as well so you got two completely different types of scopes um, we stuck it up on a tripod and overlooked a field and um, I was really interested to see how far this IR torch would go out they claim 300 meters now the conditions weren't totally dark in the di in the nighttime version you know, you'll see this um, but I was actually super impressed but let's run the VT you'll hear the sound quality directly recorded through this as well and um, let's see what we think okay so we're outside at the moment I've got the uh, immersive optics 5 to 30 attached to the leaf um, and obviously we're in daytime and I'm looking out across the fields here and I'm going to just adjust the parallax on the immersive optics to get as sharp image as possible and we're looking out to about 150-200 yards and we're just scanning around the hedge line and hopefully you'll get the idea of the quality of the sound that you're getting from here um, it's an overcast day about 3 o'clock in the UK in the afternoon um, if it is obviously a bit brighter you could put a sunshade on well, that's just scanning around for you and we're coming a bit closer and um, we'll need to change the parallax a little bit on the immersive optics to bring us in closer we're now looking at about 30 meters in front of us here and we can see that's working really nice really nice indeed and we'll just scan back out to the horizon again and we're back out towards overlooking a farm, it's about 200 meters plus away and we can see absolutely beautiful there okay so we're outside now exactly the same position uh, I've got the immersive optics 5 to 30 and it's not exactly totally dark, we're in a field by this house and uh, we have the IR switched off and you can just about make it out there are some street lights around but it is just your typical hunting type of weather um, what we're going to do is we're going to switch the IR on so just press and hold and we've got the IR on now so these cows in front of me are around about 40 to 50 yards and we can scroll around and we can sort of start looking out and we're at I let R level 1 and we'll just re readjust the focus on here on the parallax bring the parallax in and focus in a bit more so we can see the cows out here and what we can do is increase the IR so we've got six levels of IR and I've got this zoomed fairly fair way in and I'm trying to reach out as far as I can so I'm looking now about two to three hundred yards and it is actually picking that stuff up quite good that's actually quite impressive uh, that what I'm looking at there is a cow sat in the field at least three hundred yards away that's not too bad out this little tiny IR torch pretty good indeed and I'm just looking across I'm looking down the field here now and I'm looking at that cow there out there and I know this field pretty well I know that's another two hundred yards easily um, and we'll just put the IR levels down a little bit here while we've got it so that's at zero uh, that's at the lowest next one next one and I've got this IR torch pulled all the way out to zoom it as far as possible but I'm actually quite impressed with this uh, with the uh, with the Sony Starlight or whatever they call it chip in there it's using a lot of the ambient light as well so it's pretty good
Okay, so now we're at the same time of day with the voice recording on and we're using the Mamba Pro and currently we are set to five times zoom um, we're just scanning around the horizon and the game should be running at 1080p here um, it's an overcast day, 3pm in the UK looking out to about two to three hundred yards um, and what we'll do is we'll just increase the zoom and see what effect that has so I've just whacked that all the way up to 30 times zoom I'm going to have to do a bit of uh, parallax focusing on the Mamba Pro there we go bit of a shaky image because I've got this on a tripod well we can just about make out some stuff there um, good clear images now obviously we are losing a bit of field of view I'm just going to reduce that zoom down a bit that's a little bit too much to be looking at but you can see the crosshairs are nice and crisp um, any jerking you're seeing is probably me with the tripod trying to get you some images here but yeah we're scouting out to about a hundred odd yards here 200 yards up to the farm buildings over there so we're outside again now and we're now we're on the Mamba and we're set down at low magnification of the Mamba and um, you probably hear the sirens on there so that'll give you a good indication as to the sound quality of this but I'm sort of I'm around the about seven or eight times zoom with the IR switched off. Now I'm trying to focus on a cow that's probably 200 yards away. I'm going to switch the IR on and see how we do. So, just got to find the button in the middle of the night. IR switched on. And we're just going to, that's level one. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit to this cow. Probably up to about ten times zoom equivalent to the immersive optic scope. And we'll put a bit of focus level on it as well and immediately I can see there is a big difference here you know with the immersive optics it's got such more light gathering capability with the big objective lens so let's just try to um, increase the IR on this so we're knocking this IR all the way up okay so now we're sort of like getting a good representation of what's going on here and again I'm just playing with the parallax on here just to see how it works out but certainly very very good um, it's good quality with your standard type scopes um, it does work out very well but the, the downside as we all know is that if you do zoom in then you are going to lose field of view, massive field of view and you'll start getting distortions on there so this sort of works really well for normal scopes you know I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here and just to try and show this I'm just zooming a bit further and you start now to see that it, it yeah, you, lo you lose the quality out of it. You know, if you're using big high power optic scopes, it's not going to work so well for you. Keep around the uh, the 4 to 15 times zoom, and it works absolutely fantastic. The immersive optics have the upper end here. It has a much, much better optics in it. Um, and, of course, it's a fixed zoom as well, so you don't have to worry about any of that. And I'm, I'm adding a little bit of wobble to this. Uh, but yeah I'm pretty impressed these cows like I said they're out at ranging between 100 to 300 meters let's see if we can pick another one further out yeah it's struggling a little bit but that's not doing too bad but generally with us guys with air rifle we're going to be shooting around about 30 to 40 meters maximum so I'm really pushing this unit quite a lot here but I'm I'm actually quite impressed with it. So okay, as I always do, um, I tried to tell you my honest thoughts and views on this. Now, this unit was sent to me um, and I have got an affiliate link down there. Um, so we'll get that straight out of the way. But I'm gonna tell you my honest thoughts about this. Um, it's the way I work on this channel. What's the good points? Right, the pros, it's price. Um, as of September 21, 215 pounds delivered. Bargain. Um, really, you can't go wrong with that, can you? Um, the footage in here is very, very good. For a digital, it's very good. There's no lags. The little mini computer in here keeps up with everything. It's 
yeah, it's suitable, it works, it's good color. Um, the contrast on it's not too bad. And at nighttime, the visibility on the screen, everything, it does give you a bit of burning on the eye, as of all nights do, sights do, when you look at them too long in darkness and you come away and you've gotten a bit blind, but there's nothing you can really do about that. Um, I love the fact that they give you the separate eyepieces for long and short eye relief as well. The IR totally outperformed what I expected of this. Um, I've had little IR torches to barely show you for 20, 30 feet out. This thing actually will go out a fair old distance. Like I said, on an overcast night, um, there wasn't much moon around, but there was some ambient light around. Easily, I pushed out two, 300 meters. Pitch black, you might want an extra torch on there, but out of such a little diddy unit, love it. The fact that it's got a little laser dot on it as well, a pointer, uh, it's just nice. It's a low wattage one, there's no safety concerns, and you can adjust it. So if you do happen to be in the barn and you want those pink shots, you know, laser dot, and you know where it is, that's there, or it's good for sighting up as well. It fits most scopes, Now, say most scopes. The adapters they do, like I said, they do them in a 42 up to a 48, I think it was, let's just see. Yeah, a 42, this one on here is a, 42 up to a 48. Now it'll fit most of your scopes, but if you've got scopes with really big tubes, um, like some of the really big prismatics, then they won't fit. Um, but I'm sure that you'll find somebody, <laughs> ergonology, to 3D print you some brackets for it or something like that. But um, yeah, it fits onto most scopes. And you can use this as a spotter scope as well um, by attaching it to a tripod like I did, or you can just basically take your normal scope, leave the adapter on there, and the away you go and then when you do want to take some video during the day or you want to do night shooting click it on and away you go and it's that simple really really nice technology on how to do that um, it's certainly perfectly fine for us shooting out to up to 100 meters with air rifles absolutely brilliant and if you do get additional adapters then you can just swap and change it between your scopes as you've seen I've been swapping and changing between the immersive optics and the Mamba scope on there so Really good. Um, I'm actually, like I said, for the price, I am suitably impressed. There are some downsides, definitely some downsides. Um, and one of the definite downsides with this is it can be a pain in the butt to set up. Um, you need to get that unit sat totally square on here. If you don't, your crosshairs will be off to one side, up or down. Um, and it can be a bit of a pain to do that. That's why they give you the tape. My advice is go and buy some more electrical tape. You will need it. Um, but basically wrap it on there, loosen off the threads, the bolts on the adapter, slide it on, work out, put some tape on it, slide it, and what you want, you need to be able to push that on fairly tight, and it's quite a snug fit to get on it, and then tighten down. If you don't get that as a good, solid, snug fit, what will happen is the unit will sag, the crosshairs will move up and down. Every time you move around, the crosshairs will move, and you will be ripping your hair out. Um, it took me probably about half an hour before I got the hang of how you're supposed to do that. So it is a bit of a downside. Another downside is you do lose field of view. Um, because this has got a bit of a zoom um, built into it already. For example, in, on the 5 to 30 here, this has got a really big field of view where the crosshairs stop there and then there's more, about another quarter. You'll notice that through the nighttime vis image, I lost the two quarters on the side and the crosshairs filled the whole of the scope. Um, so you do lose field of view. But if you just want to use it daytime usage, then there you go no problems at all, you've got your full field of view. As soon as you wanna go night, it's a compromise, you lose some field of view, but you get the night sight on there. The file format, uh, it's a bit of a downside. I wish they used standard H.264 so that you just copy them and there would be normal MP4s uh, some, or MPEGs, but as a TS.TS, that's going to throw some people off. Some people will have to work out how to convert them or find a, a video player that will actually play them, um, no problems at all. So yeah, it's a bit of, bit of a pain, that one. Um, the fact that you can't just plug a USB cable in here and charge the 18650 battery up on it, that's a bit of a downside. So you get the battery supplied with it, but you have to take the battery out and buy a separate charger. And hopefully you guys have probably got enough 18650 chargers lying around. It'd be nice if they included the charger in the box, even if it costs an extra couple of quid. They do not cost much for China to make them and throw them in the box. Um, like I said, it fits most scopes, etc. Um, 
if you're really out to certain big distances or if it's really dark, you might need an additional IR torch to back this one. This works pretty good. Fairly low light issue, a little bit of ambient light. Certainly works up to 300 meters. But um, just, so just check that out. You know, if you're in really pitch black in the middle of nowhere, you might need an extra IR torch on there. Um, this has a pros and cons. You leave the adapter on there, that's really nice. It means you can slip this on, slip it off. Because it's such a pain to line up, you generally don't want to take it off once you've got it on there and set up right. But then that means you've got this great big metal adapter there where your eye is. Yeah, watch out for that, especially if you recoil boys out there. Um, just watch out for that. Um, uh, what else do you do? You have to buy the additional adapters. Um, I can see why they've done that to keep the price down. They're only £15 for adapters. If you've got four scopes you want to put this on, you'll need to buy another three adapters. But they're only £15, so I can see that. It's a little bit of a, a downside. But I think I've pretty much, have I got everything here? Yeah, I've been through the whole of my list here. So what do I think of this? The, uh, the uh, One Leaf NV100. It's a bit of a long video, but... I'm actually very, very impressed with it. For the price, I think it's a cracking piece of kit. You can't really go far wrong. It does what it says on the tin. It's a bit of a pain in the backside to set up, but once it's set up, it works. It works very, very well. The images are crisp, the video's crisp, and it's a joy to use. So um, yeah, certainly try it, check it out. If you're after something like this, that you want to be able to attach to your normal scopes and then use your normal scopes um, as normal daytime optical and put this on for nighttime, certainly check it out. The video, uh, the links are down in the video description down below. Um, let me know your thoughts. I know some of you guys have got the PARD MV007, some of you got the One Leaf um, MV100. I'd love to know your thoughts, your comments on that, but I'm suitably impressed with this and yeah, I'd recommend it, certainly for that price. And see you on the next video.